it's almost like time stopped. Uh, there were still things, uh, background TVs playing, uh, lights blinking, uh, drinks that had just been poured, checks are about to be paid, food half eaten. And that's not even thinking about the, the bodies on the ground. But when you actually see everyone lying down in one place or everyone down in one place or their final positions, um, it, it, you, can, you can feel it. In addition to police, fire, EMS, there's always another team that responds to tragedies, the medical examiners, like Dr. Joshua Stephanie. He is speaking about this for the first time. When I heard the number 11 or 12 people deceased at the hospital from uh, one shooting, I said, that's a lot, um, but our normal staff can handle it. Then as uh, the morning went on, I started getting more texts and more calls. Then I realized the scope uh, of the disaster, or the event, uh, that numbers were starting to come in, 20 at the nightclub, 30 at the nightclub. For all of the victims, figure out cause and manner of death. That's his job. Surprisingly, the no, answers no, aren't always yeah. obvious. So law enforcement can recreate what happened. Um, so we need to get the projectiles. We need to tell them the injury pattern, entrances, exits, what they hit. You can't say for sure. Full metal jacket, hollow tip, all for one. Not from, not from the um, fragments I recovered now. Dr. Stephanie is still piecing together the fragments from this tragedy, but he made a point to tell me no one died from trampling or other causes. No secret that all the causes are going to be the same. I mean, we all know what happened there. By Monday, he wanted all the victims identified. A lot of people had identification on them. So we'll take that ID and look at it, compare it. And if we can make a positive ID off that, we'll use that. If we need other information, if the way to the person's cleaned up a little bit and recompare, that's one thing. Um, we can do what's called quick prints. We can take a thumbprint uh, hooked up to a laptop computer. Uh, run their print and see what their photos come up as and see if that can compare. Uh, we can get that family information, personal effects, tattoos. By Tuesday, he wanted all the autopsies completed. I wanted to complete our process as soon as we could and as efficient as we could so we could get those victims back with their loved ones. I think that was very important to myself and the rest of my staff. We're a public office. We serve the public. And that is, a, I think, a public mission to reunite those people with their families. Another sign of respect that you won't find in any rule book it was important for you to separate the shooter from the other victims. Myself and my staff, we just felt it was only right. There was no legal reason for it, no normal protocol for it. We just felt in our minds it was probably best, uh, ethically maybe, morally, to keep them separate. So uh, the shooter was kept, was transported by himself. He was kept in the, that other building by himself. I autopsied him by myself alone in that building, away from the, the victims, out of respect for the victims and their families. As of tonight, no one has claimed the shooter's body. You, you mentioned earlier that families can call you, they can talk to you, you make yourself available to them. I'm just wondering, what do you, what do you, what do you say to them? And the most common question is, did my loved one suffer? And, uh, and honestly, 99 out of 100 times, that is the question they ask. In cases such as this, I will tell them, I don't think they suffered one bit. Uh, I don't see any, I didn't see any evidence of movement or trying to struggle. It, like I said in the beginning one, when I got in there in the scene, it's almost like everyone, everyone just stopped and laid down where they were. Dr. Sanjay Gupta, CNN, Orlando. The question is, how are we going to do best? How are we going to create the most jobs? How David Cameron and PMQs taking heat. Does he have any message for them at all? What I'd say to the right on gentleman is... As time is running out to reverse an apparent surge towards Brexit, a vote to leave the EU. We will have a smaller economy, less employment, lower wages, and therefore less tax receipts. And that's why we would have to have measures to address a huge hole in our public finances. A $42 billion black hole that his finance minister says can only be fixed by an emergency budget that would hit public services. Now you can do it by raising taxes, you can do it by cutting spending. Almost certainly you'd have to do both. But this emergency budget is already backfiring. 57 of Cameron's MPs say they won't support it, and neither will the main opposition party, Labour. It risks being labelled a scare tactic, like so many of the economic arguments Cameron has already made. 
Into those choppy political waters, Britain's fishermen, long at loggerheads with the EU, sailed up the Thames into London. A flotilla come to campaign, ramp up the leave vote. Nigel, you're a fraud. Moments of drama, an indication of the high stakes when Remain campaigners photo bombed the carefully stage managed leave event. Organiser, leading Brexiteer Nigel Farage, incensed by the intrusion. Disgusting. Rich people laughing at poor people. They're multi millionaires, multi millionaires, happy to see this industry go to the wall on a big boat, effectively laughing. I think my honourable friend is right. Back at PMQs, some lifelines for Cameron. If we want to protect jobs, if we want to protect our public services, we must vote to remain in the European Union. Remain MPs from all round the country with easy questions. For an economy like Scotland's that is so uh, such a big exporting economy, there's no way we'd get a better deal with that single market on the outside than we get on the inside. The question is, is anyone listening anymore? Eight days and we'll know the answer. Nick Robertson, CNN, London.